This is the Adata XPG8200. This is the 480 gig model, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look around it, the specs, and the performance, and if I would put this in my rig. So let's take a look. So first things first, I'll look around the SSD. This is actually a double-sided unit. You should be able to see the sort of side-on shot here, where you have NAND dies on both sides. In fact, I'm actually quite proud of that shot because you can even see the uh, solder balls on the bottom. But either way, it is a double-sided SSD. The controller is what would normally be on the out, outward facing side. It's actually an SMI controller, which is a very similar or uh, same brand as Intel used for their 600p SSDs, which means that it does a pretty decent job. I would mention that inside the box, you also get an XPG sticker, which is semi-metallic, so in theory might dissipate some heat, but honestly is, is more for style than anything else. Uh, you can apply this to the uh, controller side. I would make sure that you check which orientation the drive is going to sit in in your PC though before you actually apply it if you want those extra style points to actually you know turn it to be stylish uh, and otherwise uh, you can use this in uh, configurations with uh, cooling kind of blocks or coolers. Uh, Adata actually do their own one which has a fan and some RGB on it but uh, a lot of the motherboards that you're getting these days especially the Ryzen uh, second generation chips so the X470 boards a lot of them are coming with M.2 heat sinks. Now I tested this SSD with a Ryzen 7 2700X and the Gigabytes X470 Gaming 7 board, which I appreciate is not the footage you're probably seeing right now, but that's it installed on the motherboard if you like. Um, I would mention that uh, the reason I'm using the Ryzen chip and not something like an 8700K is that the Ryzen chips actually have their M.2 slots directly connected to the CPUs, unlike the Intel chips, which all pass them through the chipset. So this is actually the, the best case scenario for these SSDs where you're going to get the least amount of bottlenecks possible. Now in terms of the testing, as usual, I'm using AS SSD, ATCO Disk Benchmark and Crystal Disk Benchmark, as well as my own sort of homebrew, basically having the uh, GTA 5 game files on the drive and then copying it to itself or duplicating those files so that it tests read and write at the same time. Now before we get into those results, I want to mention that in terms of temperatures, while I was using the M.2 heat shield on the Gigabytes X470 Gaming 7 board, the SSD itself didn't go over 54 degrees maximum and while it was heat sinking or heat soaking a little bit it did a really good job of staying cool although I would mention that when I tried to take the SSD out uh, the heat shield and the SSD itself were ridiculously hot far too hot to touch so uh, it does get pretty hot but especially with a heat shield you won't have any problems. Starting with the AS SSD in the top left hand corner as you can see the sequential reads and writes are pretty impressive at 2.6 and 1.7 gigabytes per second respectively the 4k results and the 4K64 results are actually pretty decent for this style of drive and uh, the access time is also pretty impressive too and a pretty high scoring on that end. ATTO shows pretty consistent results especially above that sort of 64 kilobyte range all the way up to 64 megabytes with 1.7 gig writes and up to 3 plus gigabytes reads which is very impressive and Crystal Dismark actually basically backs up all of these numbers with again a really impressive over 3 gig bits per second and 1.7 for the rights and again 4k and even 4k q depth 32 uh, being still very impressive results taking a look in the bottom right hand or left hand corner you can see the gta copy is almost done uh, doing its thing and it's running at an average of about 750 megabytes per second when i wasn't recording it was running actually over 800 megabytes per second so again this makes it really impressive especially in what's essentially a torture test for both reads and writes so as you saw, this is an impressive SSD in terms of its performance. You're looking at over three gigabytes a second with the reads and one to two gigabytes per second writes, which is really pretty impressive. If you're using this in a more kind of standard uh, copying and pasting to the drive or whatever, then you're looking at easily one gigabyte per second writes, which especially in real world testing is really pretty impressive. And I think a lot of people who are gonna use this as their boot drive or whatever, are gonna have a great time, you know, for especially game loading times and stuff like that, just gonna be instantaneous with that sort of read speed. Of course, this is still an SSD, so it's still as susceptible to wear. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend, say, leaving your 
your page file on here or a lot of other uh, kind of you know regular rights to it but you can do that if you fancy of course you may just need to replace it in the near future now the drive I'm testing here is a 480 gig model they do come in larger and smaller sizes so whichever one you fancy picking up feel free to take a look at the link in the description down below that will take you to your hopefully local Amazon store and hopefully a little bit of a range of the, the different sizes available now as I said one of the questions I want to answer in this video is would I put this in my rig and I am very happy to say yes yes I would if Windows installations weren't such a hassle then I'd be happily uh, and also if I could keep this drive for long enough I'd happily throw this in my rig and be using it as my main boot drive or even just as a game storage cache drive because uh, this is incredibly impressive in terms of an award it has to be a gold award as said incredibly impressive and I highly recommend it in terms of a boot drive or just a drive for your PC in terms of its pricing it's decently positioned it's not too expensive it's not necessarily the most budget drive especially considering the performance you get but it's still pretty decent so uh, yeah highly recommend it as I mentioned if you want to take a look at the drive or check out pricing when and when you watch this take a look at the top link in the description down below you can also support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday Wednesday Friday and Saturday basis by using the Patreon link to support me directly or the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below I'm really grateful when you do use them so thank you very much you can also check out the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and the bell icon for notifications some other videos are over here for you and uh, yeah thank you for watching if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video